So today we are looking into uh, Figma and especially creating Vadim, Vadim based UIs in Figma. Um, might start with a brief explanation about what Figma is and maybe what Figma isn't. So Figma is a collaborative uh, interface design tool. Uh, it is kind of the de facto tool that the UX and UI designers are, are using today. Uh, what it isn't is a is a like a, a low code tool, so it doesn't have any any connection to your code base, or it doesn't really really generate you you functional code. It can do some some nice things with that helps with uh, exporting styles, etc. But essentially, it's a it's a graphic editing tool similar to to what Photoshop used to be back the like kingpin back, back in the day. Um, what makes Figma really suitable for uh, UI design is the kind of alignment of uh, having these repeatable things, components, as they as they call those, which is a similar co concept to the uh, web components or reusable UI patterns that we that we have in the in the web applications. Uh, similarly to the CSS styles, we can have uh, variables in the in the Figma files. And uh, for the components, we can have different properties which can kind of reflect the uh, API of the of the web components. Figma is uh, free to free to use, uh, but it also has some uh, paid features. So all the core functionality is is free, and anything that we are seeing today are something that you can uh, use with a with a free account. Figma uh, starts to require a paid license once you uh, have multiple people editing the same files, so you have like real-time collaboration, or when you start uh, sharing your component assets across multiple different files. So then you need to define a team that is sharing some files. So it's more more on the like collaborative features that require the license. Uh, today we are focusing mostly on the Vaden specific things, so the Vaden components and the Vaden Vaden assets, and not that much the uh, like a fundamentals of Figma. Figma has very good tutorials in in YouTube and introduction materials. Uh, there's a lot of like third party uh, articles and and tutorials for using Figma in in the web. So th those are recommended if you want to dip dive deeper into the uh, Figma functionalities. Um, for Vardin, we have uh, three different uh, asset sets for Figma. All of these are free free to use now and forever. So we have the Vardin design system, which is the like vast, the way, way biggest, biggest of these. So this includes all the Vardin components uh, pixel perfectly matching the web components that the Vardin, Vardin uh, design system has. Also, all the components are styled to uh, look like the Luma, Luma team that comes comes with the Vardin since the Vardin, Vardin 10. So the visual, visual style is matching that. Um, all the component configurations and, and examples uh, given in the file are such that can be relatively easily uh, repeated in, in, in uh, real Vardin applications. To support that, we have a separate Vardin charts to be a separate asset. It's a uh, slightly different different topic and the structure of the components is slightly slightly different. And then the Vardin icons is a separate asset as well, simply because there's hundreds of icons and when you are searching for components, it will uh, start plotting the results with those icons when there's hundreds of those in the project. You can find all these in the uh, Figma community, uh, which which is how they call their uh, like a file sharing uh, uh, platform where you, where you can find uh, these Figma files and design resources shared by others. Also, uh, this figma.com slash advarin takes you there, which is a short link for that. Before we are uh, diving into drawing UIs in Figma, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about like a typical design process. So 
we start with a, some kind of challenge. This might be based on the uh, user feedback or it might be coming from a business unit that something, something doesn't quite work right. Uh, let's say that the filling some form in the application is taking, taking forever, it's too complex, uh, it's error prone to, to fill that. So what to do with that is first we should take a step backwards kind of uh, try to understand the setting in which the users are using using the uh, part of the application. Is it getting the right people using it? Is it relevant for those? Uh, kind of do an analysis of, of who's using it and, and why they are uh, failing or why they are making errors, why is it slow, etc. Instead of like jumping into the form itself and, and, and trying to make changes there, kind of understanding the problem a bit, bit more broadly. Once we uh, understand the challenge at hand, we should start uh, defining, drawing conclusions about our, our findings, kind of create a definition for our issue that we are trying to solve. Because otherwise, we are just doing something and hoping that it hits with a, if we don't have a clear definition on, on what we are trying to solve. One one good way would be uh, listing the different factors contributing to the poor user user experience and trying to tackle those with your design. Once we have a definition for our problem, uh, we are starting to work towards a solution. This typically doesn't go uh, straight from from an issue to to a final solution, and and we're done. But instead, again, we start uh, broadening our horizons, looking into different possible solutions. So in this develop phase, you uh, do quick iterations, rough uh, sketches on how we might solve the, solve the issue at hand. Maybe look into uh, competitors or uh, look for inspiration elsewhere that how are others solving the, solving the similar, similar issues. Once you have uh, multiple solutions, you might show those to some colleagues or gather, gather uh, feedback for those or simply pick one of the solutions that seems the, seems the best or one, one of the alternatives that, that seems the best. And then you start focusing on polishing that into a, a solution. So here we uh, might document the document the approach you want, maybe make it more high fidelity if these are uh, more like wireframes. So working towards a, a, a documented uh, design that could be, could be implemented. Uh, Figma prototypes, for example, are good for, for this phase that we can uh, prototype some of the interactions that we want to have in the, in the UI. So often, Often the UI designs are not just like one single static screen, but you need to either annotate or, or have multiple views explaining all the functionality of the, of the, of the user interface. So uh, typically what we do in Figma is the purple parts on the right. This is more the uh, drawing part, while the left part is more the requirements gathering and, and uh, understanding what we are about about to solve. That's all the theory I had prepared for, for this. So now we can jump into the drawing part, all the fun, fun things. So um, I have written this uh, sh short brief uh, that could be something that, that uh, a UX designer receives. So we are working on an imaginary application called Job Planner. And these are the requirements for a employee registration form. So uh, we are in a in a designing a new view in within the employees module, and we should have a form for registering a new employee. Then this one lists all the form fields that we should have, kind of representing the data we are gathering in the form. And then in addition, we should have a list of tasks for a new employee in which the end user can select the relevant ones. Then uh, for the visual design, there's 
uh, brand guidelines attached. In this case, it's just the uh, different colors, colors we want to be using in, the, in a UI. And also uh, we have received from our marketing team some screenshots that, okay, this is kind of the styling that we want to go for, or these are some of the screenshots they like and, and we want to draw inspiration from. So let's see how we can uh, fill the requirements and help our development team. So we are starting in the uh, Figma community uh, where we can find suitable assets. So we are going to type Vardin in here. There's uh, four files that are provided by the by the Vardin, Vardin account and, and our team. So we take the Vardin design system, click open in Figma, which does duplicate the file and create like a local instance of, of, the, of the design system file. Um, we can now rename the file to be job planner, job planner designs. Within the file, uh, you'll find some instructions for using the components and links to the Figma documentation. What this component files con contains is all the uh, color, color variables that exist in the, in the Luma styles, all the typography styles, shadows and shapes, uh, the Luma icons, which is a subset of the a smaller set of icons than the button icons, and then the various components, checkboxes, combo box, custom field, date pickers, but also the more advanced ones like uh, data grids, many bars, bunch of, bunch of others. So let's see how we can make use of these. I'm going to create a new page in this Figma file. And we'll call it employee form. And now from the other file, we can copy our requirements to be here so we can see those at the same time. Uh, let's start by uh, creating an empty canvas, giving that a name. And the first step we could do when, when uh, creating an application is to start defining the like application frame, the main navigation, etc. cetera. Uh, you find the components, you can either go into these pages and copy them directly from here, or you can find the same assets on the assets page. Here we want to select that we are using the uh, components that are, are within this file. So let's search for something like uh, application, uh, app layout component, and there's a nav bar. So we have a component for that, which is resizable. Maybe we don't want to see the uh, drawer icon and we want the name of the application to be job planner. Okay. Here we can see the properties for the component. So if I change to some other component, we're gonna be seeing different component, uh, different properties for those. Uh, to create like a main navigation, I'm gonna use just a, like a text uh, layer picking a text style. So this has all the all the heading styles, all the different styles, text styles we need for applications. And also the colors are something that we don't uh, define as a, like a hex value, but instead pick one of the uh, colors that are already defined in the in the uh, Luma team. So that's one, let's add a few more of those. Uh, let's create this. So this could be representing our main navigation. I'm going to turn this into an auto 
layout so we can easily define the spacing between uh, the buttons and we wanted to have the uh, employees as selected so maybe you know, heavier font and let's use the primary primary text color on that other things we might want in our application nav bar is maybe an uh, avatar it's quite common maybe we want a like a search bar so that's a text field and then i'm thinking of a like a, a notifications mm, notifications center or some, some kind of button to show notifications now we have a text field in selection and here we can see different properties for the text field maybe we want to hide the label and modify the today i can't speak and write at the same time uh different label or oh, this has like a placeholder so let's say that this has the tertiary text color uh, on the text field we want to have a suffix element and then the suffix element itself is going to be an icon which is the search icon it's good enough uh, for the notifications we want to have something like the bell icon in the button now we can uh, put these in our navigation bar somewhere here maybe define these as a auto layout as well and, and adjust the spacing a little that will do now it's starting to look more like an actual application um, what we could do is that if we, if we know that we are going to be repeating this same element across multiple views is that we probably want to rename our layers to be more descriptive make these either a group or we can already turn those into our custom component which we might call app header maybe in, in this case uh, what i tend to do is i'm moving the master component outside of the frame so now now we can have multiple multiple screens uh, using this this component and whatever changes we make for the master component will also be reflected on the on the instances okay then let's look into the requirements and there was a form that we need so i start with uh, a text field and simply copy multiple of those in here the text fields are replaceable with with other types of inputs so i tend to my preference is to start with the start with the text field and then tweak those as we as we need so first name john last name Go and we need an email. Something like that. A start date. And for the start date, we know that it's it's gonna be a date picker, like date field instead. And there's we can uh, so this panel here is used for swapping instances. You can also uh, drag and drop elements from here to replace those. Let's do a date picker in an empty state. Uh, needs onboarding, it's said to be like a Boolean. So maybe for that, we want a checkbox, checkbox with label, not a box. And set the value here t 
then we have job title. Let's leave that empty for now. Team supervisor. Um, then the profile picture upload. That's not going to be a text field. It will be a upload component. So let's use that. Maybe give it a label. So there we have it. Maybe this form isn't quite as usable as it, as it could be. Uh, what would be an improvement for the form is start to like uh, define uh, different sections in this in this form. So maybe the profile picture isn't related to these. Maybe the first name, last name, and email. You could say that those are like personal details, and then the start date and the team things are uh, job related or the work related. So let's add a text layer. So now I'm simply giving these labels using a heading style in here and a heading text color. Uh, what I tend to do is I'm I'm tweaking the like spacing between the fields to be something that I want to want to use. Uh, so once you have uh, selections, you can see the gap between the elements in here when when, when the space between the the selections is the is the same. Um, maybe we want to have two columns in our Form. So maybe the uh, first name and last name can be side by side and the email, it requires a little bit more space. So maybe that can be spanning across both. Okay, that's good enough. And then these we are calling job details. Uh, let's make these two columns as well. Job title, team, and supervisor. Let's say that those are wider. Now again, we have this uneven spacing spacing between the fields. So I can use the select these, select tidy up. Now it set it to something that it, it thinks is is uh, like makes sense based on the based on the original locations. But now I can easily tweak that to be what I want. Uh, I'm working on Mac, so holding down Alt in my case uh, reveals these like measurements between the between the fields. So here I can see that it's also 16 pixels between the fields and 16 pixels between these text fields. Maybe the uh, team, the job title might be like free text entry. Maybe the team and supervisor those might be existing things. So we want to use a combo box instead now it's starting to come come together to keep our file a little bit better organized we can uh, define these to be groups so i'm grouping all these grouping also these uh, we can rename these personal form and job form. This is not, not required, but kind of how I'm often perceiving these Figma files is that I, I want to keep my layers panel, uh, the order of layers very clear and somehow like uh, <laughs> reflecting the expected DOM, DOM structure of the, of the uh, UI. So now we have a app header, two form sections, and a upload component still floating in there. And let's set that to be 60 pixels, and this one also 60 pixels, and align to the top. <coughs> uh, 
uh, looking into our requirements. So we had some kind of list, selectable list of tasks. Let's take a title from there. Tasks for new employee. Then some kind of list, list box component should be suitable. Uh, now let's see what kind of size did we use for these 400 pixels. So maybe we want this to be 400 pixels and this one 400 pixels as well. Uh, the list box uh, is an example with like a nested component. So the list box itself is just a layout which contains multiple items. We can add uh, or make make these hidden items visible to show more or if we need to go beyond uh, what is already available there we can detach the component and have full control over the over the nested nested layers uh, for the items we can uh, for example make those selected or focused and change the text layers so the tasks could be something like a health check, meeting with uh, HR, meeting with CEO, something like that. Maybe this doesn't look too much like a, this would be interactive or it's maybe not that clear. So how to make it better could be that we add a lines between the items. Uh, now I'm adding a stroke, first picking a color, and then saying that this stroke should all only be at the bottom of these elements. That's better. Maybe the last one doesn't have a stroke. Um, what else? Maybe the profile picture thingy could be a little bit bigger. Um, the auto layout allows us to do some overrides. So it's kind of limited how, how much we can, uh, what we can change for these, for these components without detaching them. But uh, the auto layout is one example that can be, can be overridden. So we can change the, can change the uh, paddings and gap between, between elements. There, it's starting to be there. Maybe it looks a little bit dull. So how to make it a bit more interesting is that we could turn this into, into some kind of like elevated section or something. So let's try that. Uh, add a padding on the sides. Maybe we want uh, this thing to be the same 400 pixels as our other column. Now we can see that the components is are like components are overflowing. And now as we are using auto layout, we can simply say that just take whatever space there is in the parent. To make the parent more visible, maybe we want to use a background color on that. And also, we could apply a border radius. Now uh, we can define just a like a pixel value in here. But what's nice now nowadays in Figma is that uh, these it defines uh, variables or allows to define variables. And now these border radius, small, medium, large, are something that exists in, in Luma as well. So this gives it it easy to implement. So we're picking the large border radius variable from there. Uh, maybe now the gap between these is a bit spread out. So we could define these to be another auto layout and say that we want 16 pixels between those. Now what the auto layout gives us is that if we add or remove the items, the like wrapping container is automatically uh, adjusting, adjusting the size of the content. Uh, 
So it's similar to the uh, Flexbox, Flexbox that we have. That's uh, roughly our structure. Uh, what we are still missing is that uh, because this is a, a form, we need uh, some saving actions. So let's search for button. We need a primary button and a secondary button. Primary one we are typing in save, and the other one says cancel. Mm, let's put them somewhere here, and maybe the spacing is more like eight pixels. And uh, still to make the view a little bit nicer, maybe we need to add a title for the whole view. So this was about creating a new employee. And we want a heading one. Alignment options like that. And somewhere here should be like a toolbar. Be just a group, and now I'm doing some minor tweaking for the positioning. I kind of tend to uh, like uh, multiplies of of four, so kind of my base pixel grid is is based on a four pixel grid. So I'm using the like four four eight sixteen twenty four thirty six forty eight. Uh, as, as like spacings and, and sizes for the for the different elements. That's good. Uh, maybe these could be like closer so they are visually more connected and maybe this side is more loosely connected. Uh, now we can make the whole thing centered almost was already on accident. And now if we're happy with our view structure, so this would now correspond to the uh, default Lumo styling. Uh, we had some brand guidelines or brand colors at least in here. So let's copy those over and see how we could adapt these to our design. So now that we are working in the, in the file that defines the different components, uh, all the components use these uh, color variables, there's also size variables, so we can change those variables to match match with our color palette. So here's a, a, a button to open the uh, variable definitions and just text colors, different contrasts, semantic colors, so now we want to focus on the semantic colors. The Lumo default is the blue. So we want to change that to be this green. And we should instantly see that, that uh, the elements using that color change in our, in our application. There's a few different shades. So for the text, let's pick one shade darker. And for the transparent ones, let's just copy the hex value in there. Could do the same for the for the success and error. Now we don't use the those anywhere. Maybe we could make an example of the of the error as well. like so. And now we're jumping back and forth a little, but let's take the combo box and define that it's in an uh, invalid state. So now we can see that the uh, red error color is matching this one and our primary color is matching this. So across all the all the different components in the button, in the, in the different buttons, it's, it has changed into this teal green. What else do we want 
to have with the visual styles. Maybe from here we could take the like dark background having white cards on 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 uh, shade shade background. Also the input field style is slightly different from from the button defaults or the Luma defaults. So we could have this bordered style instead of the field. Uh, let's start by giving the background a shade. I mean that's a little dark. Let's do something like that, a custom value. Now we want this to be the base color and also the app header should be the same base. Um, now our info fields don't look that nice, so maybe we want to turn those into uh, the bordered ones that have a uh, uh, have the have the border around them. So there's different sets of variables. There's one for colors and another one for sizes. And the field border width is by default zero, but we can change that to be one. And now we can immediately see the see the difference in the in the fields, and it also works with the different states of the fields. Um, there's some some other variables like the border radiuses that we could tweak. So let's say that we want everything to be a little bit more rounded. So let's bump up the medium to be eight and the large to be sixteen, and now we can see that the buttons change to be more rounded. Back to the colors, uh, we have some uh, variables that for configuring the colors and the components. The overlays, overlay borders, field backgrounds, okay, let's change that into the base color, which is white. We can see that there. Maybe the border style is a little bit too pronounced, so let's try something like 30 instead. Okay, looks good. Now the checkbox is maybe a little dark, so that should be the base as well. Let's try turning the checkbox into a check mode. Uh, this actually should be the small border radius. So, you know. Now we've managed to change the visual stars to be something, something, at least something different from the from defaults. Questionable if it's better or worse, but it's different at least. Um, if we want to change how, for example, the buttons look, uh, we can select one instance, and then there's a button to go to the main component. Now we have it in the in the same file, and this is where we find the master component definitions for the for the different buttons. So in this case we want to select all the buttons with the secondary style and let's say that we don't want a background color at all or maybe that should be the base color should be white and we want to have a, a border on the buttons. Now you should be tweaking the uh, border color to correspond to the text on all of these, but I won't be doing that for now. So now we have uh, defined the menu style for our button component. If we go back into the into the design that we were working on, now we can see that these buttons changed. There's some glitch with that. Now it's the same. Um, maybe this should say upload image drop here, something like that. Then it's just like a personal preferences on how the different components look. Should this be like, uh, maybe not that wide, but like fixed width or however we like them to be. 
yeah maybe that's the that's the changes we want to want to do in here um the last thing we can do is uh turn this into an interactive prototype so what i'm going to do is hit command c and copy and paste it here so now we have the same view two times and i'm thinking of uh doing a prototype of uploading an image so in the simplest form that would be such that uh, we replace this upload component so paste to replace with an image let's set the size to be how big was this 352 and two. Okay, I'm going to have. Sorry, now I'm messing it up. Yeah, maybe that that's fine. Set a border radius for this as well, and so now we would be clicking here. It turns into this. Maybe we need a button to uh, go back to the original state. Cancel is, is a bit too, too much. Maybe we want to use an icon button instead. Reset the size. But color doesn't uh, stand out too much. Let's use contrast color. And instead of a, a looking class, let's say a Cross. Okay, to define the uh, prototype, so now we are kind of building a slideshow with two slides, and we are we are toggling between these two states of the of the uh, the. Now we in, in the in the design panel or design tab the whole time. Now we are switching into the prototype. First, we define that our prototype starts in this view. Then we select the element that we want to uh, use to trigger the interaction. So now it's this upload component and clicking anywhere here uh, should take us to the other frame. So when hovering on the, on the side of the selected element with the prototype tab selected, we can drag a connection to the second frame. And now it shows that on click, there's some other options as well. We want to navigate to this view. Uh, there are some possibilities of, of like fading in or having that animated, but most commonly it's the, it's the like changing instantly. Okay. Uh, from here, we want to be able to click this button, which resets our prototype back to this state. So now we have two, one in interaction in, in each view. Uh, to show you the overlay, maybe we want to have a date picker overlay opening from, from this date field. So we select this one, uh, link it here. And is now, now instead of navigating into this frame, we want to open an overlay and we want to open it in our own define the location where it opens, so below the field. Now we can see that it doesn't quite fit in the view, so let's make it a bit smaller, like that. And now it fits in the in the view. Um, clicking outside of of this frame should close it, but also when we click anywhere in this frame, we should close the overlay. Let's see. Now we are opening the uh, prototype preview and changing the zooming option so that we can see the full view. Now if I'm uh, clicking anywhere in the view, I can see uh, the elements that have interactions flashing in blue. So if we click anywhere here, it opens up the overlay. And now if we click anywhere in the, in the view, it will close the overlay. With the profile picture, uh, 
we're kind of just simulating op uploading a file. Uh, so clicking here, now we switched into the other frame, which had, had the image. And clicking on the export in the corner will set us, will send us back in the, in the original frame. So that's pretty much it. Now we have, have built a, a functional prototype for this kind of functionality from, from scratch in roughly half an, half an hour. Um, once you start uh, defining your own designs, uh, it is a good, good practice to use these uh, components, start defining your components, especially if you have, if, if you identify that there's gonna be any some some like repeatable parts in your in your UI. Um, so now we might, for example, change this icon button uh, to not have a border, so the tertiary style. And now we can see it immediately reflected in to here and also here. Maybe the uh, avatar we want to have an image in that one. And now we can see it, it being uh, updated to both without without uh, like manually going to each, each frame. So it's very useful, useful for that. I think that's everything I had planned for showing in Figma. And we did have some polling questions we'll be interested in to hear your opinions. Okay, we do have a polling question. If you go to the bottom right panel, you'll see that there's a polls tab and I am publishing it now. And it is which design assets or tools would boost your productivity? And it is multiple choice, so you can select however many you want, um, but don't forget to hit the submit button at the, the bottom there. And I'll give everyone a few seconds. I think it's a it's a fairly common yeah. like the demand to like a or it's very interesting that how how could we support code generation from from Figma that seems to be quite quite a common demand and mm -hmm. there are some some ways of of doing that because Figma is is has its like a structured has its own structured format and now especially if if the UIs drawn in Figma are based on the uh, Valent component assets. We can kind of identify that this is a valent text field and maybe it has a, a specific uh, property configuration and turn that into valent code. But... Mm -hmm. Yep, that was the, the common that seemed to be the consensus at our first session. So it looks like uh, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of similar answers. Yeah. Okay, so we can head over to the Q&A. We do have some questions coming in. If you have anything, feel free to enter them now. Um, so the first question is, how come the button component uh, is very similar, looks similar to Vaden? Mm, similar to Vaden. No, I don't mind not fully Okay. Yeah. Understand the uh, the question. Kind of the idea is that all of these components would be based on the uh, button button components. So if we have a grid component or a minibar, or can change the look of those. But essentially, all the components, like a dialog, would be something that out of the box looks exactly the same as you would get with with the button like default styling so yes on on purpose it, it should be mm -hmm. pixel perfect matching matching the real components now we've done some uh styling overrides so they look a bit different that's mm -hmm. the, kind of the idea okay and then is there any plugin for vaden in figma uh not really not at the moment uh we've been uh testing with uh, exporting CSS directly 
from from Figma uh, with some just parts of this uh, variable to CSS style uh, um, plugins. We haven't yet created our own. One of the reasons is that the uh, dev mode has been in beta. It's actually coming out of beta today. So we are yet to see how that changes things. Will there be some, some changes in the in the uh, infrastructure around the, around the plugins? Uh, just to give you a quick demo, there is this uh, kind of additional uh, variable set that is defined in a way that would export you uh, like a Varen Lumo compatible uh, color uh, like CSS, CSS code. Uh, no, that didn't work quite yet, but yeah, like such. So now I could copy these styles and paste it, paste those into my applications, and I would be getting at least the color, color variables defined in the in the same way. In the future, if if there's like more and more uh, component specific variables are being added to Vardin, but also that uh, Figma starts supporting more like typography variables, etc. It might be very, very interesting opportunity to create better integration between between Figma and, and Styling Martin, but we don't have anything anything planned or, or released yet for that. But been doing some experiments. Great. Okay, this is an interesting one. Is Vaden going to use AI within the designer to help with the design? Mm. <laughs> There, there's been some like uh, experiments internally in 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 leveraging AI. Uh, it's not really uh, related to Figma, I'd say. So it's not not really my part to to uh, comment on those. Um, Figma itself has uh, at least tons of plugins that use AI that may be uh, beneficial in in like uh, creating your 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 own UIs. Um, mainly from from the like official Figma side, they have the Fig Jam product, which is like a, a uh, whiteboard and, and diagramming version of, of Figma or that kind of flavor. Here, they have been doing quite a lot of experimentation with with AI AI enhanced tooling, but yeah, not not quite yet there with in the in the like uh, with the UI design side and, and personally i've been uh testing out some some tooling and the results are, have been a bit controversial that sometimes it, it creates something seemingly meaningful and, and other times it's it's uh more counterproductive than actually actually helping so maybe in in a couple months the the models will be if, if there was a lot more like a ui design aligned model then I might get excited about that. All right. Uh, once you have the prototypes prepared, is there an HTML code or style sheets available to download? Um, not directly. In the uh, dev mode, what you can do is there is this kind of inspect functionality. So we can take, for example, a button. We can see the different uh, paddings and, and uh, borders and, and like a box model. Of the of the component, we can see uh, basically this is CSS code, and uh, color values can be copied as hex or different different uh, in different units. Uh, the export in this case is only exporting images, so that's not very helpful helpful for us. Apart from maybe some icons or some simple graphics like that. Mm, but this is kind of as far as it, as it goes. There's no real like uh, connection in to the to the actual code or any, any code base or any any functional components in Figma as of as of today. Okay. Well, great. Um, if anyone has any additional questions, you can always reach out on Discord or, of course, go to our website. Contact us through there. Um, Yusa, I wanted to thank you for presenting. And of course, uh, thanks to everyone who joined today.
Thank you. And I'd be very happy to receive uh, any feedback you might have about the Figma assets when, once you once you start using these. So the, you can place comments in the in the Figma file or in the community page where we where we have just a, a uh, like a comments in here. So feel free to point out things that are working for you or are, are not working for you. Great. Thank you very much. We hope to see you at our next webinar. Bye. Bye.